A group of former city police officers are still costing the city money. Members of the Gun Trace Task Force created a criminal enterprise under the noses of their commanders, colleagues, and city leaders. Operation Crime and Justice lead investigative reporter Joy LaPola uncovers what cases have yet to be settled with the city and why. For some, it's payback time. The style in which these officers police city streets seems like something you would see in the movie, certainly not real life. These officers stole money, drugs, and just about anything else they could get their hands on. Already, 15 Baltimore police officers have been brought up on federal charges. These are officers the city attempted to distance itself from, but in the end, just couldn't. Are you going to continue to lie to me? In August 2016, Albert Brown had the terrible misfortune of crossing paths with members of the Baltimore Police Department's Gun Trace Task Force. You see the cocaine up in the visor? To an average person, these officers appeared hard at work. A little, uh, you can see the handgun right there, too. Getting guns and drugs off the streets. Pulled out the handgun and the cocaine. In reality, they were a group of criminals with badges who spent a good part of their careers framing people for crimes they didn't commit and stealing from them. Attorney so with, Michael Glass represents this, Brown right. in his civil lawsuit. He had money that was taken uh, and his rights were se severely impinged upon. So uh, it was an egregious case. After officers arrested Brown on drug and handgun charges, the officers drove him a few blocks away and burglarized Brown's home. Y'all just gonna run out without no warrant. Brown's lawsuit, one of 23 to take center stage in federal court as mediation efforts begin between the city and private attorneys representing those the officers targeted. These people who are disenfranchised and ultimately uh, some of them severely hurt, uh, some physically, uh, all mentally. During several days of mediation, it's estimated 16 of the 23 cases were settled. The dollar amount unknown until the city's spending board approves it. In July, Baltimore's Board of Estimates approved $1.1 million in payouts for police misconduct. More than half of that amount stemmed from the Gun Trace Task Force. That involved only two cases. 16 have just been settled. If these cases don't resolve, uh, there's a very good possibility that they couldn't be heard uh, for some time. And we're talking, uh, you know, potentially years. Uh, in some of the cases, um, that may be warranted um, if the offer is not sufficient. But with my four clients, we only resolved one because we were not uh, happy with the numbers that the city suggested for someone. A Dwight Pettit and Mike Glass have clients who did not settle. Their cases, according to the attorneys, are far more serious and deserving of more than what the city is prepared to pay out right now. These people spent time in incarceration in jail. Uh, due to police misconduct and frauds and faulty reports and planning of evidence. For Pettit and attorney LaToya Francis Williams, they're preparing for trial, which they expect will bring a potential payout far larger than the $1.2 million Pettit says the city offered to the group during mediation. My experiences with the city is that the city just will not do right until you get them right at the courthouse door. We've had these officers convicted and they themselves are serving time. And the city is now saying, so what? It's almost as if they're saying your life does not matter. Your liberty does not matter. What you've lost does not matter. And so we're here to say not only does it matter, but we are more than ready to litigate these matters. We did reach out to the law department regarding the settlements we have yet to hear back. While settlements have been reached, Glass points out, those out-of-court settlements have yet to be approved by the Board of Estimates. So just go to somebody else without no warrant. The amount a suspected drop in the bucket compared to the more serious cases and the potential payout they may bring. We're talking about cases involving people who were left permanently injured and locked up in prison for years. Oh, still recording? There is a sense of urgency to get these cases settled, according to the attorneys I spoke to, in part because of COVID-19 and the impact it's having on the court system. But there is also a new administration coming into City Hall, many telling me that they prefer these cases be resolved. 
If there's a case of potential public corruption you'd like us to investigate, we want to hear about it. You can call us at 410-662-1456 or you can send us an email to crimeandjustice at foxbaltimore.com.